The Quintana City District Court in the Ashanti region has remanded a tailor apprentice for allegedly killing a friend at Sewa in fr on Friday in an attempt to retrieve a 100 Ghana City debt owed him. Emmanuel Boateng will be in police custody for two weeks. The Muslim Chief District Police Command says there is enough evidence linking the suspect to the murder of Kweku Edu Jemfi, a second year student of Kian USD. District Commander Eric Akwabua explains that 25 year old suspect Emmanuel Boateng confessed to the murder and how the murder was committed. A club used in the murder and a mobile phone owned by the deceased were retrieved from the suspect. The police say more investigations will be done to prove the case. My colleague Nanaya Ojima joins us live with more details. Nana, good afternoon to you and welcome. Now, when did the suspect appear before court? Hello, Nanaya Ojima, I know you can hear me. If you can hear me, uh, when did the suspect appear before court? So this morning, around um, 8 a.m., that is when the suspect was taken to court at the Continency District Court. And um, the court listened to the plea of the police to request for remand for the suspect. So he has been remanded into police custody for the next two weeks. So on the 9th of May, they are suspected, they, they, are, they are supposed to reappear with a suspect at the Continency District Police Station. Well, the District Commander Eric Akwabwa has been given further details on the incident. What more has he been uh, uh, say, uh, saying or what more do we know? So, Mr. Akwabwa, um, according to him, after the... Um, the suspect conducted the or carried through the murder. He went back home to take a rest and also have his bath. Um, later, the mother of the deceased um, came to the police to report of his her missing child. Now, the police then, since they had earlier got information about a murder at Sewa, um, they had pictures of the deceased um, who was lying in, in in his own blood. So they, they they took these pictures and showed to the parents of the deceased. And from the from the um, from the pictures, the woman could identify her child. Now the police then started their investigations. From the police, they were able to um, get information that the, the 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 victim went out with a suspect earlier in the morning, and since then the suspect hadn't been seen. So um, the the, sus the the Mr. Um, Emmanuel Barton was then picked by police to assist with investigations, and it was through the investigation that was established that uh, Mr. Barton had taken um, the the young man Jemfi, 22 year old, to uh, the the location where the murder happened um, and with a club he hit him severally and killed him instantly um, and from from the investigations of the police they were able to retrieve a mobile phone owned by the deceased and the police according to the police they've been able to successfully link the the murder to the um, suspect in their custody, Emmanuel Boatin, and presently at the family home of the deceased. Um, as you can see around, um, the parents and also family members are gathered here, grieving the demise of their ward. Um, I have the, the father of the deceased here. If time were enabled us, I would want to speak to him briefly and um, get um, how the two, close the two were, because according to the information that I've been picking in their home, mm -hmm. these two were very close friends and um, they lived nearby. Um, the suspect actually lived in one of the property of the, of the deceased. So I would want the father to explain more and give me details of the relationship between the two of them. Daddy, um, I'm going to join you. So, um, information I'm going to so far is that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm Papa, send in a relationship with you. Oh, I'm going to say that 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 and I say, no, mammy, I require my book. Breakum to a coy, see me hano wa, or be did ha, one of my banner of free school bass, or no man, it dear grow ba, and yes, it be our name a banner war, it be near me banner. Just or bammy fear, and banner me banner be dear good man, was a more bay, me and a noun for no tight pa, noun for pa, and yago. I see me and damn for, be sanity, yea, sanity. 
a crime bena what in the same saying as it's it is a seminal. Oh, the for the last two weeks, to be baba queer engagement to be with you. To be banned over take now. When we say Nimia Bane, yeah, you know, by or be boy, man, or you know, into a year so free or a bad test, you know, or be cool school. And also, we am chain or be called by Saturday. T Friday. Your hand and my main bear seven thirty. None of my me cook room. And why I say, Uncle Talk Cuckoo, a mere last bomb, you want so ten years. No smarm me ban. So Uncle No, old Tuku couldn't wait. Say, hey, ya. It's a boy, no, ye, who dear, ye, ye, say, boy, and then so or so, Uncle Jan, no, Uncle Tuku couldn't. I feel they may frame a baby, may jelly be a miss, will send me cook room, no, the family ban, mammy. My friend, 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 Police station, contancy, no acquire case, no fiasi, no acquire case now twenty one or coy. To a coy, no, and the police one say, Ah, what is a see a cumo bewo, say we are a cotton remo or baby, and omni picture a train, no see me back. It's one or banning who do in a police one say, Eh, look away, no money make a side, no more catch a man, and say, Oh, vanity, what the emergency. Na police for no enemy me kasa I said na boy no one ni kutu kuku no way. And so one is a man only area for boys ni na say chini she me bano or no asa no amunam. He say jina ha numrebe around be seven thirty. He jina ha na police for no say boy no one ni kutu kuku no men chini na oma maneko. Na me 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 kujina ni twenty ten minutes no mobile ni mbe chini ni ne koi. So from the father, according to the father of the deceased, um, the, the young man had gone out with a friend to buy porridge for his mother who had sent him in the morning. And the mother waited, the porridge didn't come, the young man also didn't come. So the mother had to leave him behind and um, go to wherever she was going in the morning. Later, um, they tried um, they tried to find um, the, the Mr. Jemfi, but unfortunately, they couldn't locate him. It was later that the mother reported to the police, and uh, police showed pictures of um, a dead person who the mother identified as the child. The police later came here to pick the... Uh, uh, the suspect from the home and through the investigations they were able to link the murder to the suspect so currently as we said earlier he has been remanded by the continental district court very very sad and, and shocking details there thank you very much Nani Aljima. follow the story we'll come to you uh, if we get some fresh details thank you so um four people lost their lives and 46 others sustained severe injuries in three separate road accidents over the weekend. The fatal one which occurred on the Bolly Bamboy Highway Sunday morning involved a Kumasewa bound bus believed to have run into a broken down truck. We'll bring you the details of the uh, accident shortly, but first let's get more on these incidents. Head of Communications of the National Road Safety Authority, Pell Adusu, joins us live with more. Pell, good afternoon. What good more afternoon. have we gathered on, on these incidents? Yo. Thank you very much, and greetings to your service, Elizabeth. Um, we, I, I had this incident yesterday when a media station called me. I called my people, and we are, about, we are now about to have the preliminary investigation results from our people on the ground. And so uh, the, the, the incident is really unfortunate, very worrisome, and very sad news to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We wish the injured city recovery and those who have lost their lives to their families. We say 
uh, condolences to them. Um, when we, we, we attacked and I called people from the um, eyewitness point of view and what I've read so far, it seems everything is said about the indisciplinary action of road users, especially drivers, wrongful taking, <coughs> broken down vehicles that were not taken from them, and people driving recklessly without uh, paying particular attention to their environment, overloading, and all those small, small things we should um, not do or avoid on the road so that we will not uh, encounter such incidents. That's the first thing happening. It is not that the road, some of the roads that uh, we record these type of incidents are good roads with uh, uh, safety furniture. So the indiscipline, if people will just listen to the campaigns, to the messages, sensitization messages, and awareness that we are creating and abide by the road safety rules and regulations, I think all these uh, cases that should be avoidable will have been avoided. But our hmm. people are, are so recalcitrant, so indisciplined, so not caring for life, life, our safety. And so that is why we, we applauded the MCCD and the IG for picking out uh, some creation projects that will safeguard our lives on the road. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pearl Adusu there. Um, let's move on to other stories. Now we want to bring an account of the Bole Bamboy incident. There's more in the following report. An ESP bus with registration number AP. 7778-21, which was traveling from Kumasi to uh, collided with a breakdown trailer loaded with goods heading towards Mali with registration number GR2703. That he, according to an eyewitness, the driver of the ESP Kia was overspeeding. According to the Bole District Police Commander, DSP Benjamin Bastin, the ESP Kia bus, which was traveling from Kumasi to Wa, uh, collided with a trailer at Kwame Kwesi, killing four. Meanwhile, many injured were rushed to the Bamboy Polyclinic, whilst the disease have been sent to the Wanchi Hospital for autopsy. In the central region on the same day, correspondent Richard Kujinako reports that 46 persons sustained various injuries in two separate accidents on the Kaswa Cape Coast Highway. The first accident happened at Gomua Mpota, while the second happened at Gomua Mankesin. According to the police, three vehicles were involved in the first accident. Richard Kujinako has more in this report. The two accidents happened at separate locations, but we were all on the same stretch, the Cape Coast winning back Kaswa stretch. The first accident happened at dawn, 12 a.m., while the second happened a few minutes after 6 a.m. on Sunday. We number fire service commander, DO3 Quincy Hughes, narrate what happened. I witnessed HSA. Now, Sprint had a DNA. Now, Kia Ryan on DHA. Eyewitnesses have told us that the Sprinter bus was leading while the Kia Rhino followed. The DAF was heading to Cape Coast from Accra and the two were from Cape Coast. All of a sudden, the Kia Rhino attempted overtaking, but first it hit the car in front of it. Eight people were trapped, two females and six males. We managed to get them out of the car. A pump ambulance. ambulance specialist hospital. This eyewitness told us about the second accident. He explained the driver best a tire and some assaulted several times. And one of these sprinters was coming ahead. Then it was a flat tire. Then the tire got burst. So when I heard the sound, I know that no, there's something going to happen. So immediately the tire just got burst. The driver stepped on the brake. Then the car just then outside we are. So but girls being good, but they were just injured. Serious injuries. So they just took them to trauma hospital. The fire service commander, DO3 Kwesi, he said the car had exceeded its passenger capacity and was fully loaded with full staffs as well. He said instead of the vehicle's capacity of 21 passengers, it had 38 passengers on board. But 
we load you in part 38. 38. Into your difference, you Instead of 21. And I was saying load It had loaded 39 passengers instead of the allowable passengers of 21. And it had also loaded plantain and other full staff. So it had loaded beyond its capacity. But luckily, no one died. A total of 46 passengers were injured, but 20 of them are said to be in critical condition. All injured persons were sent to the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital while the road has been cleared. The vehicles involved in the accident have also been towed away from the accident scene. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenyako. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and the Finance Ministry have been assuring striking civil servant that government is committed to settling all their demands. The civil servants are currently on strike on demanding what they call the implementation of neutrality allowance promised them some four years ago. But speaking on the news file last Saturday, Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma assured all grievances will be resolved. He urged the striking workers to return to the negotiating table for talks to continue. Last year, I spent almost 10,000 Ghana cities on betting, and I won only 200 Ghana cities. And I realized that this is a way for the white man just to make me poor, and the entire African youth to be poor. So I just have to stop. And that was last Two key issues for considerations on this matter, Samson. The first one has to do with the name neutrality allowance. That uh, I think that if we don't put it in perspective, we will struggle over form, over, uh, we, we, we will be talking much over form, over substance. Uh, in fact, the Cross Act, to be fair to Cross Act, this negotiation started since 2019, and it took, ended in 2020, early part of 2021, 2022. I think the agreement was signed in January uh, with effective date of February. So these are about two years of engagement led by the senior presidential advisor, uh, uh, Fair Wages Commission and the, and the sector minister, as well as Ministry of Finance. So we have been part of these processes all, uh, all, all this while. PROSAC did not come on the negotiation table with neutrality allowance. They came with all kinds of demands and allowances which they justified, they justified and it could in fact, if government accepted those ones, that could triple what they were getting at the moment. So government and the negotiation team sought to uh, came to the conclusion that, in fact, CLOSAC is the lowest paid group on the, on the single spine uh, structure. This is something ought to be done for them. But in doing something for them, you don't want to create a situation where once you do something for one group, when you are negotiating with one, remember that all the other groups are sitting and watching. So once you do something that they can also tap in, then you open the floodgate and there will not be enough resources to pay. So I believe it is the reason why in trying to couch a term that they thought at the time could limit, could be limited to only a closer, came up with the word neutrality allowance. It is not something that uh, closer uh, actually uh, demanded. It was a 10. And so now that, uh, of course, the team have met again, looking at the public uh, position on such a uh, word called neutrality allowance. And I believe that going forward, we may have to really look at the word neutrality. Are you shying, are you shying away from the word because of the public backlash? On, on, on the word neutrality, yeah. we will lose the substance, which is the agreement the committee has that something has to be done. Mm. It is what name you give to what should be done. And if the name you are using is creating problems, we really look at it. Uh, speaking on the AM show this morning, Deputy Chief Executive Officer for the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, Ben Arthur, explained government recognizes the disparities and is ensuring that some corrections are made to resolve their own pass. Government has recognized some disparities, and I must be very uh, sincere with all of us that government has already taken the necessary action uh, there is a committee, a technical committee that has been put in place to review the entire single spine pay policy. And that came uh, after consultation with organized labor and the uh, employers association. And in fact, it was, it was a product from the national labor uh, conference that was held 
in uh, Kou in Kotia uh, late February and early March. So that is one of the outcomes and government has handed its promise to ensure that the necessary review to address any disparities are concerned. But I can also assure you that in recent times, all new CEOs that have been appointed and have have these disparities that we're talking about. So this means some existing disparities that have been identified. And government has gone ahead to ensure that the necessary corrections will be made. I must also be sincere with you that the targets, as far as the wage basket is concerned, are very difficult to meet. Government has gone ahead to even slash some uh, CEO's uh, benefits to 30%, but that is not to say that that entirely addresses the issue. So we are, we are taking the necessary steps to ensure that the right thing will be done. We recognize this, some of these disparities, and the good news is that we are not sitting idle on this, and government is not resting on this matter at all. Engineer Benatha is the CEO of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, but the Deputy General Secretary of TEU, Charles Osei, is warning there will be dire consequences if government doesn't come clean on the matter. If one is not motivated enough and seeing that the other side is enjoying more than what we are enjoying, then it means that it will call for some of these agitations. And therefore, it is very, very important that you look at it. Simply terms, inflation talks about persistent increases of uh, prices of goods and services over a period of time. And you and I know that this country, Ghana, as we all know, you cannot leave just the majority, the few of them enjoying, a majority of them are also suffering. And you know we have a dependency ratio. Workers, we have a lot of dependence that depends on us. So if workers have been so magnanimous over the period, and don't forget, workers are not interested in, 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 in strike here and there because it affects all of us. But when a situation comes and you see that some people are enjoying more than others, then people will begin to agitate for their panel play. You know that if inflation is one of the keys to salaries, again, I mean, looking at the exchange rate, as compared, it, it, it depletes our disposable income. Mm. Hence, all of us are being affected. I said earlier on last week with your same sister station that government seems to be truthful, and then government might be truthful, that things are very difficult. And therefore, workers and other stakeholders, what can we all do to ensure that at least we mitigate the effect of what is going on as it is now? But look at what is happening. This one, you don't need rocket scientists to understand where people, you can see government appointees, you can see people moving here and there, people enjoying so much, and workers will come for eight hours, and at the end of the day, nothing. Your, your, your real income is depleted, and therefore it will call for that. It, is, it has nothing to do with political things, but it has something to do with leadership. The Ministry of Education says the no grantor policy recently commissioned by the Students' Loan Trust Fund will serve as a long-term solution to the difficulty of university students to pay up their fees. The announcement is in reaction to the decision of KNUST authorities to defer 6,000 students for non-payment of school fees. There are growing reports that university students are becoming addicted to gambling, with most of them betting their school fees on football games. A former student of the University of Ghana, Supreme Petras Anab, shared his experience with MFA Apau on the probe last night. Last year, I spent almost 10,000 Ghana cities on betting, and I won only 200 Ghana cities. And I realized that this is a way for the white man just to make me poor, and the entire African youth to be poor. So I just have to stop. And that was last two weeks. Hmm. Is it that you are just not lucky? Because 10,000, you only got 200 cities. That's serious. So you've stopped. 
Yes, last two weeks I stopped betting. Just last two weeks. How many? After how many years? Let me say eight years. Eight years. And throughout the eight years, you would say that you bet what up to ten thousand or more. No, no, no. The ten thousand is just last year. Ah. With my calculations, last year. So okay. if I'm to combine eight years, the money I've spent, it will be more than the GDP of Ghana. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I couldn't help it at that point. Well, but, <laughs> but really, so you do this with your friends? You all do it? Is it on every game? Yes. What exactly do you do? I'm, I was just learning that you have to create an account amongst others and do it. But you have stopped, thankfully. The youth are listening. Uh, you have found a way. You've seen the light and uh, you've stopped. What would you tell your other colleagues then about, about betting? Uh, let, me, let me make this correction. I just stopped two weeks ago, and I don't know if I'll come back. We pray for you that you don't. Is it yeah. addic it's addictive? It's addictive in, in the sense that the first time you bet, when you win, you think it's an easy way of getting money. If you lose, you will try as much as possible to go again so that you can recoup all your monies that you've spent uh, uh, on betting. So it's not an easy thing. It's very addictive. And as you said, I think with my friends, you know, when it came around 2012, we used to go to the office. At that time, I was at Cairn University. So from Cairn University, you walk all the way to Bantama to, to go and take bets and come back. And there are times you go this, uh, is it, I've forgotten the name. There is one, the moment you take the I think it takes only two minutes to get your results. Mm. And you will be there, you spend almost 500 Ghana, and you have to work from Bantima to Penn West. And when we came back to Legon, I think technology has advanced. So we were doing it on our phones and on our laptops, and still we were not winning. So I can say I wasn't lucky. And even most of my friends, I was with them, they were also not lucky because Interesting account there. Now, in a bid to tackle the challenge, the SRC says it is liaising with a student loan trust fund to help students pay up the fees. SRC President Michael Abua says a reorientation seminar will be organized to reverse the worrying trend. We could do as the SRC to very cooperative efforts to have seminars that will educate students on that. The SRC has and will be willing to do those things. And I must say, MFR, that the SRC has put in a lot of interventions when it comes to this, especially, please, 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 um, cries of the students with regards to extensions. The university has been gracious to accept it. So many few of them, and with regards to this particular intervention, okay. the university, in a 30 minutes meeting with the government, together with the SRC, was be able to conclude that the one month is used to absorb the areas of fees. And we will continue to have that cooperative and serene environment that we've had from January. Thank okay. you. Now, staff and management of the Gambaga College of Education in the Northeast region have repeatedly um, been calling on the government for the completion of several infrastructure projects abandoned since 2017. The over 25 million Ghana Cities Get Fund project, which commenced in the 2016 at the college's new site, have been abandoned after an amount of less than two million of the contract sum was paid to two contractors. According to the school management, the situation has greatly affected academic work and the general progress of the college. Correspondent Elias Utanko has more in the following report. This is a new site of the Gambaga College of Education at Gambaga in the East Mamprosi municipality of the Northeast region. These infrastructure projects you see here are made up of a model school complex, an administration block, a multi-purpose hall and a hostel block phase one. Since its inception 10 years ago, the Gambaga College of Education has always grappled with infrastructure challenges as it's still operating an old primary school compound with a current student population of over 800 inadequate classroom and accommodation spaces for both tutors and students and a lack of other essential teaching and learning facilities such as an ICT center, a science laboratory and a library among others are the true realities of the college. As a result, these projects were initiated under the previous NDC government and commenced in 2016 by the GET Fund. However, 
The project has since been left at the mercy of the weather as the government was voted out of power. The principal of the college, Karim Kura Nantogma, explains the impact of the situation. In fact, the college had only 12 unit classroom that we are using as a lecture hall, which is woefully inadequate for teaching and learning. And sometimes we have to spread, uh, to, uh, because of that, we normally spread our timetable to cover the whole day, so that as the people come in and go, space is created for others. So as far as lecture hall is concerned, the college is in dire need of lecture hall. And we think if we get up to date lecture hall, it will facilitate teaching and learning. We do not have student hostels. The students are living in dormitories that we provide through our mega IGF. So hostel, student hostel, modern hostel that will befit the status of a college of education is one of the things that we need most. And we believe that if we get the lecture halls and the hostel to accommodate the students, we will produce the quality teachers that is needed to help Mother Ghana and also to support the government good policy of free China high school education. These abandoned projects were also a subject of a report by the Auditor General in 2020 on the public accounts of Ghana pre-university education institutions. In this report, the Auditor General asked the principal of the college to contact the GET Fund and the Ministry of Education to ensure that funds were released to the contractors to complete the project to achieve their intended purpose. The principal, however, says several calls to these institutions are yet to be responded to. The tutors of the college are equally worried and call for the projects to be completed as soon as possible. Looking at the infrastructure uh, on campus is so bad, so I'm making a personal appeal to the government as a matter of agency to try as much as possible to complete this project for us. Tutors are doing their, their best, but uh, we cannot do much given the current uh, infrastructure deficits that uh, we are faced with. And this is the, the only college, the only College of Education in the Northeast region. It's so frustrating teaching in an environment of this nature whilst you have infrastructure, the new site to be constructed since the change of the government. I'm sure about five years now we've not had anything been done there and we need help. If indeed the government is not doing it for now, but at least NGOs and other people can in a way come and just get us lecture halls. That is the most important thing for now. We need the lecture halls as well as accommodation that can accommodate the students so that within the space of time, where any time government is ready, maybe we will see what happens. Ilya Sutanko for Joy News. Gambaga, North East Region. Coming up in business, Ghana loses billions of cities due to poor customer service. Details after the break. Stay with us. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Ghana has lost billions of cities due to poor customer service. This is according to President of the Institute of Customer Service Professionals, Yvonne Owe McCarthy, who is appalled by the type of service offered in both public and private sectors. McCarthy discloses to Joy Business at Tema during a workshop on customer service for members of the Tema Regional Branch of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Correspondent Kwame Yanka has more. Poor customer service is mirrored in the experience of people on a daily basis. The workshop exposed participants to best practices in developed countries and how businesses in Ghana can improve on the current situation. Juxtaposing the experience in the West with what is offered in both public and private sectors, President of Institute of Customer Service Professionals, Yvonne Hui McCarthy says, the country has a long way to go in prioritizing customer service. This, she says, has a huge impact on the country's economy by way of not doing the right things, time loss, among other factors negatively affecting productivity. Yvonne McCarthy believes customer service can improve 
with a deliberate attempt. Billions and billions and billions. I think as a country we've lost so much by not being able to calculate what we're missing or what we're losing when we do not affect some of these customer service strategies that we see our counterparts in other um, continents, you know, affect all the time. So yes, definitely we lose. We, 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 and I can say that we don't lose on a daily basis. It's a second by second basis because remember that customer service actually affects the customer's experience. And when the customer's experience is negative, they make the decision not to buy from you anymore. Once they don't buy, you lose. I think that customer service is not just the job of leadership. Everybody has a responsibility from the security man at the front gates, okay? So the experience starts from security and ends at security. When the person drives through, when they go to the reception, when they speak to somebody at finance, when they are finally spoken to um, by somebody at customer service, and then when they get out of your organization. Tamari Nache of Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. As a QC Barry shares the need to prioritize customer service. Customers are the fuel to businesses. So if you don't treat them well, it's like you driving a car without the fuel. They give us the money to be able to do all that we have to do. But if they don't patronize our wares, whatever that we produce or whatever services that we render, then we are not in business. So we have to seek to their welfare and see to their needs so that together we can build a brand that can stand the test of time. Now, Total Petroleum Ghana PLC has retreated its goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2050. According to its managing director, Olufemi Babajide, plans are underway to change his outfit's name to Total Energies by the end of the month to grant license to its subsidiary to go into renewable energy. It is closest at the just ended Startup of the Year Challenge. The Startup of the Year Challenge is an initiative of Total Energies aimed at contributing to the development of the local economy and promoting local entrepreneurship. Yes, Managing Director of Total Petroleum Ghana PLC, Olufemi Babajide. Uh, we are now called Total Energies Internationally, but in Ghana by end of the month, uh, when we finish our annual general meeting, we should have our shareholders ratify the new name, which also will be called Total Energies. And what comes with that shows that, okay, we are not relying solely on the fossil fuel which we have been into for so many years but we're actually moving into renewables and when I speak of renewables I speak of uh, having electric vehicle charged uh, charge units in our service station as I speak today we have one or two stations that are equipped with this so anybody with electric vehicle can actually charge their vehicles in our service stations um, apart from that we speak about solarization as of today, we have uh, solarized about 61 sites in Ghana. And apart from that also, I mean, things like uh, industrial solar farms, wind farms, these are things we are going to do to improve our energy mix and to make sure that as a group, our commitment, which is to be at net zero by 2050, we are there. One of the winners, Anapoka Adazabra of FAMIO, who won the best female Entrepreneur Category Award express excitement about the Total Energy Startup of the Year Challenge. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and at Farmio what we do is to empower people to go into greenhouse farming and to encourage them to produce more quality high organic produce and with this win from Total Energies we are going to be able to expand our operations empower more farmers to go into organic production of vegetables to supplement the demand on the Ghanaian market. Meanwhile, Chief Executive of the Association of Oil Marketing Companies, Kwekwa Jimendria, has lauded the initiative and called on private entities to help government support young entrepreneurs. This is the third edition, and each one time is progressing. I'm very happy today, especially Andrena's projects. There are a lot of waste in our system. And uh, for here to come out something, can use for as paving blocks from the waste that we all generate. It's a wonderful achievement. I wish other private businesses would do that. But it's been difficult for government to do it. Anytime, difficulties are the things that the private people do. And um, I'm so excited that Total Energies 
has taken the lead in doing this kind of thing. And that's business for now. There's more coming up on the marketplace at the top of the hour at Next Sports. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the sports segment with me, Oreku Ampafor. The Ghana Football Association wants the National Sports Authority to communicate the current state of the Babayara Sports Stadium to Ghanaians. The FA Club Licensing Department, who CAF, would fall on for initial inspection of any stadium Ghana deems fit for the qualifier, insist the Babayara Sports Stadium is still under renovation contrary to declaration by the NSA the work on the facility had concluded. Julius Emuna, who is a FA's club licensing manager and wants the SM NSA to come clear on the state of the edifice immediately. It is clear that it is going through a renovation process. What, we, what I expect the National Sport Authority to be communicating to the public, I don't speak for them, but this is what I expect them to be telling the public, that we are going through a renovation process. We have not completed. It has not painted that picture that we have completed. It is going through a renovation process. The competition area is part of phase two process of the renovation process, and they know that. So why are we not telling the people? And that is why the FA felt that we need to discuss and publish this. We're going to play against Nigeria, and instead of focusing on the game, we're rather dispelling rumors of politically moving the game from Kekos to Kumasi because yeah. they we're not aware of the issues. So why don't we communicate to the people of Ghana? Of course, this is Black Stars, which have huge public institution in the Black Stars called for a commission of inquiry. So we cannot joke with the things about the Black Stars. Sure. So if a decision will be taken that our last game and our huge, huge successfully organized game recently, the venue that was played cannot host our subsequent match. The reason for that to happen must be communicated to the public. 